The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and today we are going to build a gaming project. Do you remember the VR Pi? My entry for Hack Like Hack? It was a little gaming device that uses FPV goggles to give you the VR experience of playing 30 year old games, especially Doom. Today we are going to rebuild that project into a more sophisticated version and the game today will be Open Arena. Amazing hacks, inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So here's my basic concept. On the original VR Pi, we did combine a Raspberry Pi 3, some MPU 6050 motion detection modules, and two Arduinos to build a head tracking unit, a base unit, and a controller for the device. In this second version of the VR Pi, or VR Pi 360, X Super VR Pi 1 X Scorpio or whatever you would like to call it because such names are a thing these days, we are going to approach a different concept. The heart of the machine will be the Raspberry Pi 3 Plus, which is much more powerful than the old version, so it's capable of running Open Arena on a decent level. And Open Arena is based on the Quake 3 engine, so we have complete 3D modeled environments and can move in all directions. In this video, the second version of the VR Pi, we are going to build a completely contained unit. Only the motion tracking is still attached to your head, because how else would we do it? But the main unit and the controller will be one piece. I will show you what I mean when we get to that part. On the original VR Pi, there was a possibility that I would rip out the USB cable while playing because of my movement and I could also hit something with my hands holding the controller. So I want to get rid of that factor and I had a simple but maybe pretty good idea. You see when I'm standing and I'm having my hands like this in my pockets, it's a comfortable position. My elbows are near my body so I won't knock anything over. In that position I could attach the unit to my belt. This way I wouldn't even have to hold up a weight. So that could be pretty cool and also I could detach it, lay it on a surface like a table and use it like an arcade stick for other games. So maybe we have a double useful function in this concept. I will investigate it further. Parts we need for this project, the Raspberry Pi 3 Plus, some Arduino Micros, and a lot of transmitter and receiver modules. So we use a 5.8 GHz module for the picture transmission to the FPV goggles. And I want to use a 433.92 MHz ISM band module I got from Element 14. This is for the transmission of the movement data. There are many different restrictions and laws to obey when using RF components. Always make sure you are informed about your particular law of your area. I have to obey a very, very strict radio transmitter law, so I will use a 5.8 GHz module with no more than 25 milliwatts and only use the B band. Let's start off with a physical build. I have laid out the components so I can see how big this unit will eventually become. Some of these components can be stripped down to make them even smaller, like this 5.8 video transmitter module. I am arranging all the components on a PCB to see how they will fit together to make them as small as possible. I have ripped apart an old USB cable to make a connector for my Arduino Micro. Just soldering on some new wires so I can connect them easily and everything gets secured with a fair amount of hot glue. Solder the wires directly to the pins for the USB port. Keep in mind you can't use that port for anything else. The ground pad is actually not on the same connector, so you have to use another ground pad. 
I found this joystick on element14.com and it's amazing. I love this little thing. It has micro switches, so it feels like an arcade stick, but it's very compact. I also got some arcade push buttons. I have no idea how many I will use, so I bought a lot. So these buttons get laid out in a fashion like an arcade stick. I'm deburring the drilled holes and snap them in. They fit pretty good. They get connected with some ribbon cable. I've used this rainbow ribbon cable by 3M. I found that on element14.com. It's very useful. Everything is sorted up. There's just one data line and the other line of every button is pulled to ground. I'm soldering together all the components for the VRPi main unit. So this is a PCB and some header just to make the connection for the Raspberry Pi. The 5.8 module gets stripped down and I use this dip switch to set the channel. I've pre-made one, so that one also has an antenna attached. And now I'm attaching the wires for the sound and video. I'm using two wires for the video connection because I have a handy cable with a plug at the end. This is the Adafruit stereo amplifier module. I'm connecting that one to the test points for the audio left and right. I'm attaching the Arduino micro to the board and solder it securely in place. Everything fits snug on the board. We also need a power switch. And now it's time to connect the controls to the Arduino. There are a lot of wires. There's always one line per button and another line that's connected to ground. I did not want to 3D print the whole contraption, so I'm only printing standoffs and I'm using some polystyrene to build the case. The main unit is soldered up. I just need some code to make the Arduino talk to the Raspberry Pi. Let's look at the code now. We need two Arduino Micros for this project. I've chosen the Arduino Micro because it's usable as a human interface device so we can simulate a keyboard and the mouse. This is the code for the main unit. First we have to include all the necessary libraries. Then we declare the pins. Now we make them inputs with internal pull-ups. So we just pull them to ground to activate them. And this button read thing is nothing fancy, no matrix, we just look if some pins are pulled low, then we will send the corresponding value, delay for debounce, and if they are not pressed, we release those buttons. We do not release all, just release all, only the button that is just not pressed, so we can combine different buttons and press two or more buttons at the same time. And that's it! Open Arena runs, but to get Open Arena to run on the Raspberry Pi 3 and the 3 Plus, you have to set your Raspberry Pi into OpenGL mode and activate the right resolution. You can find a full rundown on this on element14.com forward slash presents. This is the code for the sending unit. We will attach to the FPV goggles to map our movement in space. First we have to include all the necessary libraries. Of course the MPU6050 library and the mouse library is very important. We declare the values, begin the transmission, map the values of the MPU to the values we will output to the mouse and move the mouse accordingly. This will automatically get transferred over USB and then we have some delay for debounce. Here is the Element 14 viewer challenge. You can win a free Element 14 Presents t-shirt by taking on the challenge. I had some trouble with making the wireless transmission for the movement data work. It kind of works, but it is very laggy. So there's a challenge in measuring the MPU 6050 and outputting that over serial or over any other communication to the USB port of the Raspberry Pi. So my design kind of works. It transmits the data wirelessly to the main unit, but it is very laggy. 
that's not playable. So I'm switching to the USB portion and connect it with the USB cable to make it more enjoyable. But here's your time to shine. Design a circuit or a code on the Arduino Micro that uses the MPU6050 module and transmits the data wirelessly to the Raspberry Pi. You can use any components you like or any code you like. Post your entry under this video on element14.com forward slash presents and I will choose the winner who will receive a free Element 14 Presents t-shirt. If that's not your style of project, don't worry. We have a lot of chances to win cool prizes coming up. So there will be viewer challenges and there is also Project 14 on element14.com where you can enter competitions to win cool giveaways. The unit is basically finished. I have just added this strap so I can put it on my waist and I do not have to hold it while gaming. But I want to add one more nifty feature. We see the Raspberry Pi isn't the most powerful machine and it has some issues with certain games that run but do not run quite well or do not run at all. But there are a lot of games that would be nice to play with this arcade setup and also with the VR goggles. So I will make an add-on so you can connect the controls and the VR Pi to your general computer, anything you would like to use, and put the picture on your FPV goggles while using these controls. That's the next thing we're going to build. For this part of the build I need a VGA port. And the cheapest option is just to wreck an old computer and get it out of there. To transfer the picture from my normal gaming rig to the VR Pi goggles, I will just make a simple adapter from VGA to composite. My handy little adapter is finished. First thing you want to do is change out the antenna for the same type of antenna your FPV goggles use. So in my case, I will switch to this mushroom type antenna thingy and then connect it to your regular PC. I have just a plain VGA connector and a splitter cable so I can select the game normally on my PC, then put on the goggles and play. To transfer the movement of my head and the control inputs to my PC over there, I use this long USB cable that runs along the ceiling and connects to my VR Pi. Let's try out some games that run on the Pi and some games that run on the PC over the USB connection. Today we have used the Raspberry Pi 3 Plus to create a gaming device VR style, kind of. We made a custom arcade style controller and used the MPU6050 to make motion tracking a thing. So we can track the movement of our head in space and transfer it into the game. The VR Pi 2 is pretty similar to my original VR Pi, but it works a tad better. And the 
most prominent feature is that you are able to connect it to a normal gaming PC via this adapter and use it to play games that won't run on the Raspberry Pi at all. Don't forget to enter the viewer challenge to win a free Element 14 Presents t-shirt. Enter your ideas or your code example in the comments at element14.com forward slash presents under this video. And I will pick the winner for a free Element 14 Presents t-shirt. What are some key features that you would like to see in the VR Pi 3? Are there any things you would do differently? Do you have ideas for the wireless transmitter? Tell us on the Element 14 community. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me. Oh. <laughs> There's a motion sensor. Sensor. There's a motion sensor. We need two Arduino micros for this project. I, I, I gotta go. There's another project waiting for me. Oh. <laughs>